Hey Pyro, I get asked all the time, how do you choose good wood for pyrography? You know, certain woods don't burn as well as others. Like, how do I know what's good to burn? I get these questions all the time. I'm Jana Lizenby, your pyro professor. I'm gonna clear all of this up for you. Now, there are actually lots of really great places that you can source wood for pyrography. Places like Bear Wood Supply Company, they sponsored this video. They're actually a really fantastic resource for pyrography in general. They have wood burning tools. They actually carry my favorite brand, the coal wood. They also carry rotary tools and scroll saws and epoxy. They just carry so many wonderful things for woodworking and pyrography. It's a really great resource. I highly recommend that you go check them out. I'm going to have a link in the description for you so it's really easy for you to find them. And they actually have burn boxes. Those are full of sour wood and I love burning sour wood. It fits all of the criterion that I tell you here in this video that you should be looking for in wood to burn for pyrography. There are about seven different things that I'm gonna cover so that you can make sure that you're getting wood that is not only good to burn and fun to burn, but you actually like it. So we're gonna get right into that. Okay, the very number one thing to check is to make sure that this wood isn't toxic. You need to make sure that you're not putting yourself in danger. For example, if it's got the word poison in the name, poison ivy, poison oak, those are obvious no-goes. Also wood like oleander. Oleander is poisonous. You need to be looking it up and making sure that this is not poisonous wood that you are burning. You can actually type into a search engine, is this wood toxic? A lot of times if it is dangerous to sand, like the uh, sand particles, they can cause these allergic reactions, then that can be a sign that this is not good for burning. There are wood toxicity tables that you can check online to see if this is toxic. I know if you look up maple and you say, is this wood toxic? It shows that it's toxic for horses, but nothing for humans. <laughs> and maple is actually a really good wood for pyrography. You can also search, is this wood safe to burn? Usually the search that'll come back are searches for your fireplace, for the fire pit outside. If it's safe for those, it's generally safe for wood burning because those won't produce toxic fumes. Those aren't going to give you headaches and things like that. I am gonna say different people have different sensitivities. And so you have to be careful. Some woods that are actually just fine for some people to burn might be quite dangerous for you. Some people are allergic to sap getting burned. If you've never burned before and you try this wood and you start having an allergic reaction, then you need to not be burning it. So that's something to watch. If you start to feel like you're having a headache or you're starting to get really itchy or, or rashy or something like that, pay attention, okay? That's not something to ignore. Make sure that the wood is not toxic and it's not toxic for you. Number two, you want to burn raw untreated dry wood. Okay, those three things are really important. I get asked this a lot. Should I seal it first and then burn it? Should I paint it first and then burn it? Mm. You want to burn the wood when it is raw. If you can, you want it to be kiln dried and that gets rid of a lot of the sap. That's really nice because sometimes the sap resists burns and sometimes it can produce toxic fumes. So you want to make sure that your wood is dry and you want to make sure it's untreated. People will tear down old barns and they want to burn it. They'll have old fences that they bring down and they want to burn it. I'm really going to recommend that you don't do that because that also is burning chemicals. If it's already been finished, you can sand it down. I don't recommend it. But if you're going to do it, make sure you've got ventilation. Use one of those gas masks, not just a dust mask, not just a Sanders mask, not even a carbon filter. You want gas mask because that is producing toxic fumes. I don't think you should do it, but if you're gonna do it, make sure you're using the right safety precautions. A good rule of thumb that I tell people is if you wouldn't burn it normally, don't burn it in your studio. If you're not going to burn a finish, don't burn over something that's been finished. If you wouldn't burn a paint, don't burn over something that's been painted. Paint after, stain after, finish after. When in doubt, burn first. Then <laughs> do everything else after, okay? All right. You also want wood that is dry. And what I mean by that is that it's had time for the sap to have evaporated, for the moisture to have evaporated. Let's say you're using your own wood, like you have a dead tree in the backyard and you're gonna chop it down. Well, that's just fine. You can slice that up in slabs or in wood cookies and that'll be awesome. 
but you want to give that time to dry. Even if it was a dead tree, there's going to be moisture that was still inside of it. There's going to be residual sap that is inside of it. So you want to make sure that those have a chance to dry. That can take several months. It can take a long time. If it's a really big slice, it can take a couple years. So you want to make sure that you give it time to dry and to lose that moisture. If you burn it with the moisture still in it, it's going to resist the burn. Water is going to resist the burner. And then sap also resists burns and it gets an oily feel to it when you burn it. And if you don't let it dry slowly enough, it can start to crack. It's called checking. If the wood checks after you've burned it, that can be really frustrating. So you just wanna make sure that you're using raw, untreated, dry wood. The next thing is to choose whether you want hardwood or softwood. Now, I'm not talking scientific matters here. I am talking whether it is actually hard or whether it is actually soft. They have scientific classifications that tell you whether this is a hardwood or a softwood based on whether they drop their leaves or whether they have evergreen needles. Honestly, I don't know why they do that. It has zero to do with the actual hardness or softness of the wood. You want to look for woods that work with your project. If it's wall art, it doesn't matter if it's hardwood or softwood. If it's going to be used, say a cutting board or say a piece of furniture, mm, you probably want a harder wood because those softer woods are going to be dented up pretty fast. Or if they're a cutting board, they're gonna start holding all those chopping lines and that's unsanitary. So you wanna make sure that you're using the right kind of wood for your project. And then of course you wanna make sure it's something that you enjoy burning. I personally prefer burning softwoods like basswood and poplar and aspen and willow. Those are softer woods. The harder woods are like maple and cherry and walnut. Those are hardwoods and those are beautiful to burn. If price is an issue, those harder woods are going to be more expensive than your softer woods. Number four, you want to get a smooth wood grain. Now these here, you can see the wood grain pretty strong. So I chose these so you could see it more easily. This piece is pine and this has a pretty rough grain. The light rings are very soft and the dark rings are really hard. So as you burn, the harder woods are going to resist the burn and the softer woods, your burner is gonna sink into it unless you're really, really careful. So pine can be very frustrating. This is ash. Ash tends to do the same kind of thing as pine and so does oak. They tend to have soft rings and hard rings, but it's more hardwood, but it will give you very uneven burns and you will have little skipping happening at every ring and then you'll have to go back in and touch those up. Now, if you have something like basswood, basswood, it will also have these visible rings. It, it tends to have a pretty clear palette kind of like this, uh, even though it has some freckles and things, that's, that's all fairly normal. The light rings and the dark rings are the same hardness pretty much. So when you burn across basswood, it's going to be smooth. Unlike pine, which is going to resist at every ring, you're going to have a much smoother burn over on basswood. Okay. And this is also basswood and it has the same kind of a thing, even though it's got these long stripes in it. These ones typically are all pretty smooth. So you want to choose something that has more of a smooth grain rather than a really rough grain. The next thing you want to look for is the color of the wood. Every wood is going to have different variations in its color. Like basswood has a little bit more of a yellow hue to it. And then you have aspen wood that has a little bit more of a whiter hue to it. At the same time, this is also aspen wood. You can get clear aspen wood that's a little bit harder to find. And then you can get really interesting varied aspen wood. I would totally burn either one of these. Even with all of its colors, I think that this can be used in uh, very interesting projects. But if that's something that bothers you, then you wanna make sure that you're not choosing something like aspen because aspen's going to have different colors, even on its clear pieces. Basswood, you have basswood like this that's pretty clear, and then you have basswood like this that has lots of freckles and a little knot but it's still a very light color. And so you're gonna be able to see the burn against either of these canvases. And same with these, because they're a lighter color, you're still going to be able to see the burn. Then you have woods like this. This is cherry and this is black walnut. And it's not showing it super well in the video, but this is actually a little bit darker. When you burn this, 
it'll show up nicely until you seal it. And then when you seal it, if you did any light shading, it's going to hide because when this wood gets wet, it turns really dark. So black walnut can have a less desirable effect if you're doing shading. But if you're doing something like a monogrammed cutting board or something using black walnut, that's gonna be beautiful. And then you have woods like cherry. Now this one has a darker center and a lighter outer ring. And the darker center, both of these, when you finish these, they're going to have a slightly more red hue. And the redness clearly here is going to be darker and have a similar effect to what the black walnut would do. It would hide some of your shading. But if you have a lighter piece of cherry, it's not going to hide as much of your shading. Both of these are excellent though if you're doing just line art or lettering or monograms or things like that. Then you have pieces like this that are actually pretty clear. It's got a little coloration and stuff like that. But if you're looking for something like this, you need to be looking for like artist grade pieces of wood because most pieces of wood are going to be coming with interesting colorations like this piece. And even so, some people, even with the artist grade, you're still going to be getting stuff like this because this here is actually still really good for burning. And it's really hard to find clean pieces in nature that don't have any freckles on it, that don't have any knots on it. So that's something to keep in mind. And then if you're burning things like poplar, poplar has greens and purples and things like that. Whereas these ones have more of the light tan, maybe a yellow hue to it. So you just need to be checking the coloration of the wood pieces that you're working with. The next thing you want to look for is whether it has bark or not. So if it has bark around the edges, that is called live edge. Right here, it's got live edge bark. So that's what you look for if you want bark. They don't have a specific name for the pieces that don't have bark on it. So I call it clean cut, but other people have different names. This is a wood panel or a wood canvas. I love burning these, by the way. I get, I get basswood panels, I love those. And then this here, this is birch and it's a wood slice. And this little wood slice doesn't have any live edge on it. See that? It's been machine cut all the way around. Whereas this one is just cut through the wood. That's the difference. If you want to get something with bark, you want to look for live edge. Now I want to talk about the different kinds of cuts that you can get. This one is a wood round a wood circle, a wood cookie, a wood slice. Generally, those are the words that you're going to hear or see when you're shopping for this kind of wood. This kind of wood is generally a slab. So slabs are cut down through the wood. Here, let me show you. So let's say that this is your tree and if you wanna chop it this way, then you'll end up with a whole bunch of rounds or wood cookies. So if you decided instead of cutting it this way that you wanted to cut it that way and you wanted to cut these into long strips, that would then be equivalent to this. You would have a wood slab. Now the biggest difference between these when it comes to burning is the wood grain. In basswood you won't notice it too much because it has a fairly smooth grain regardless of whether you have a cookie or whether you have a slab. But if you have a piece of pine, using a wood cookie is going to be a lot harder than using a slab. A slab of pine is going to be much easier. You'll only have little spots of grain to fight with instead of the entire thing being loaded with grain. And when you burn with the grain, it tends to be easier. You have less bumps if you go with the grain rather than against the grain. And here the grain goes in a circle. So it doesn't matter which direction you go, you're always gonna fight the grain. So that is something to consider when you are shopping. I'm also going to be putting out videos soon about the top 10 most popular woods for pyrography and my favorite wood for pyrography because it's not the same as the most popular woods. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell so that you get notified the moment that I drop the video. And when I do post those videos all about wood, I'm going to be placing them right here for your big beautiful eyes to be watching. And if the video was helpful, hit that like button. In the meantime, I'm off to go make more videos. Later, Pyro. Okay. You want, you want